Okay, so if you watch the three minute one on LinkedIn, then I will try not bore you with the details on this one uh, with the same story. But really what we're talking about here, guys, is efficiency within a business in regard to eliminating waste. Now we're not talking about delivering a lower quality product to the customer. We're talking about delivering the same quality of product, but more efficiently. So like I said in the other video, what we're talking about is us trying to ship a package via UPS. And when we look at all these steps we had to go through and everything we went through, what we're really talking about, what we were willing to pay for as the customer was shipping a package from the United States to East Asia. That was it. That's all we wanted to do. And so instead, what ended up happening, and I'll try and hit this at a higher level for you guys, was that we went ahead and processed that. Okay. We got the content, you know, we got the label, everything was good. Shipped it. Very next day, we get a phone call and they say, hey, we need customs forms. And I said, well, I don't understand. We put them in the package. Oh, no, no, no. We also need an electronic copy. This is UPS calling me. And I said, okay, well, send that over to the office. The office fills it out. So they take the forms. They have to be signed. So they take the forms, print them off, fill them out, sign them, scan them, and send them back. Then a couple of days later, we get notified from our customer, from our supplier, that they can't receive the package, that it's sitting at, in, in holding. So IFP logs in. We look at our account, and it says that the package is on hold. Now, again, UPS never notified us. Our customer or our supplier called us and said they can't receive the package. So we go ahead and log in. We look, and it turns out it's on hold because there is a customs duty or a customs fee due. This amount is $3. $3, you guys. So recognize all of this is literally over $3 is what we're talking about. Okay. So I go ahead and try and pay it from that email. It doesn't come through. Keep getting an error to say, try again later. Can't get in, can't get in. The office then goes ahead and says, okay, we can't get in either. They call the customer service department at UPS. Name, company, tracking number, recipient, right? They give all that information. UPS says, oh, you have the wrong department. We need to transfer you. Transfer. Now, again, here we're talking about lean, right? So there was no question here what, what we needed. But instead of getting to a department that understood our problem, we were transferred to generic customer service. Now that department has everything they need about what our issue is, which is all the way back here, which is to pay a $3 customs fee. They transfer. The next, next department, oh, what are you calling for? Same information again. Describe the problem. Transfer it again to account support. Account support, same information again. Describe the problem. Oh, we need a transfer. You don't remember who we were even transferred to. We got transferred to another department. That department, again, same information. And like you look at the opportunities here from a business standpoint, because obviously every one of these phone calls is costing UPS money, not only in labor, but in equipment, in space, in everything else to manage this phone call that we're talking about for $3. Like literally, this very first person could have just said, never mind, don't worry about it, we'll take care of it, we'll let you know next time. And actually been in a better financial position. Because if you follow along here, happen through all this, then we finally get transferred to international support. International support then tries to handle this and they go, oh, well, now we need to bill you $25 because what I'm speculating here, they call it a rebilling. What I'm speculating is that UPS recognizes that their system sucks. So they then want to charge $25 to rebill the $3, which they've never actually ever billed us for. And the only reason we couldn't pay it way back here was because their website wasn't working. So we said, no, it's $3. We want to pay the $3, not the $28. They said, oh, well, then you need to go to a browser. We informed them that Chrome wasn't working. They said, oh, we'll use Microsoft Edge, which, of course, because everybody uses Microsoft Edge, um, all four people. And so then we go there. We log in with Microsoft Edge, still not working. Then they advise us, no, no, you can't be logged in. You have to log out to the generic page. And you guys see the costs. Everything's adding up here for everybody, right? Costs continue to climb. We then finally get through the international site through a series of steps, finally pay the $3. Now remember, that $3 is also a credit card fee on that. So UPS isn't even going to get that amount. Ta-da, the $3 is paid. So this is where I've talked about this at CD Expos. I've talked about this with other integrators. I talked about this back in my, you know, back in my manufacturing engineering days. So a special shout out to Dean Whistler, to Ed Stinson, 
thank you guys for your help in teaching me a lot of this when I was young and didn't know anything. That really, what we're talking about here is just inefficiencies in business. And this is where this business, in this case UPS, could be far more profitable and deliver a better experience to the customer. So similar to what my friend Jason Sayan says, when you look at this, when you map out the process of one customer service call. Now, I don't know how many packages UPS sends from the States to East Asia or really to any place where there'd be a custom fee, but I'm guessing it's a lot more than like 100. So think about that multiplying this through a company as large as UPS. And this whole process produced less value. I was more frustrated. Customer service was more frustrated. My supplier was more frustrated. And we all spent more time over $3, right? Because of this inefficient process. So really to try and summarize it then, think of it as that when you're looking at a process, what is the customer actually willing to pay for, right? What is the value add? In this situation, our value add as a customer was to mail a package that weighed a half a pound to East Asia. That's all we want to do. And we were totally okay paying the $80 to do that. That's it. UPS involved 16 more steps that involved at least four, well, four different people at IFP and another at least half a dozen people, direct people at UPS to produce a lower quality product. So this is kind of this tip for all of you to think about in your business or the place that you work. What kind of things do you have going on that are just making everybody more frustrated? What can you do to eliminate those? Because I can tell you for people like me, that makes this little vein over here quit swelling so much when I get to experience an efficient rather than inefficient process. So, all right, I'm done. I'm off my soapbox. Have a week, great weekend, you guys.